You're bound to run into conflict no matter what you do in this life. It's just part of life. The question is, is that conflict actually necessary? And often it can teach us lessons, so technically every conflict is necessary in a great sense, but also conflicts are very much unnecessary because we can totally avoid them or not even see them as conflicts. So it depends on how you look at this. And really the way you perceive things and the way you deliver things makes all the difference when it comes to furthering a conflict, lessening a conflict, and so forth. It's a reason why like some people say to me, hey, Corey, I like your approach to things because there's plenty of people who have said many things that I have said throughout all my videos, throughout all of time. Um, and they've said it in some ways that other people would say is better than me or worse than me. <laughs> and the thing is, is that I'm just not them. I can't speak exactly the same way they do. If I try, I'm not myself. And then there's a conflict. But that conflict comes from inauthenticity, which is a great, great conflict indeed, because you cannot uphold somebody you're not. By your nature, you are you. But there is conflict where it's not so much easy to understand, <laughs> like it's honest or dishonest. And in today's world, you look around, you don't know who's being real or not sometimes, but you can be able to tell over time overall by their actions and what becomes of the aggregate. And I say this because this is all important to regard that there's a lot of people out there who make judgments of others, whether it's generalizations or just saying, well, this person's a psyop or this person is this or that. And not only does it limit us, label us, identify us with something, which we are clearly more than that, it also tells me about you if you're judging other people. Because what is the mind to do that right away? as opposed to the other methods, such as sewing by example, such as, you know, if you don't like the problem, if you don't like it, you think it's a problem, well then show the solution or ask questions, approach it from a sense of supportiveness rather than hatred, rather than anger. And these other methods are often not so much instinctual, but rather very slow and conscious efforts. And that's what makes them so effective, especially when you can tap into the conscious and make it unconscious. Make it so that way on your daily practice, your daily speech, your daily actions, you are consistently acting with principle and not, oh, I act with principle, but sometimes I act very instinctually and do things I don't really want to do. And if I speak slower in my videos, I will likely speak better. And if I really take the time to breathe, I'm more likely to comprehend my thoughts and what I'm talking about. And I know this for a fact, but yet there is a pressure on me to get the word out because you may not watch the video long enough for the retention. And I have expectations in my mind because of those expectations, I have judgments, and now I'm not myself anymore. Now I run into a conflict. But many people perceive things like conflicts, like calling people a psyop, and it's happening a lot, especially in the truth and freedom movement, when I simply see it's a waste of energy. Oftentimes our attacks are a waste of energy, even when we're attacking people who we see are interfering with our lives and our freedoms and our health. It's important to acknowledge the problem. I, I definitely agree with acknowledging the problem. But if you aren't certain on the problem, it's better to ask more questions than to provide answers. And even if you are certain, ask questions is going to convince more people because they will see it for themselves. And this is why it's the deepest comprehension of something. You're going to speak less, yet speak more, meaning you know more. I mean, even Plato said, right, like fools speak a lot. Which is why I don't make a lot of videos like this, although I know they're rather popular. And I mean, I like to speak openly and this is rather easy. I don't really have to do much editing. People like these videos because perhaps I'm more open. I'm just like authentic and I can do this rather often if I want to. <laughs> but the truth is I don't want to because I like to remain silent. I like to remain observatory. That's how I got to where I am. And it's kind of schizo to just be talking to myself like this. 
why a lot of people, when they first get in front of the camera, they're like, I can't do this. This feels uncomfortable. You can't really blame them because it's not so natural to do this. It's natural to reflect on our thoughts. It's natural to once in a while sit down and really like talk through with ourselves, but not speak to a camera, to a bunch of people, and then build up this influencer following and then have this fan base, which may look up to you like an idol. I mean, that's an issue. So you want to talk about the PSYOP, a little about their billions of followers, the millions of followers that follow them. Yes, I know I'm not talking about government and authority, which is obviously way worse because it's all involuntary and based on violence, but even just a rather a celebrity or an influencer, they're problematic too in the fact that a lot of people just follow their word without thinking for themselves, and that's always going to exist. You know, the problem with government is that doesn't have to exist because it's really just slavery, you know, telling people how to live their lives and then using violence. Like, the violence part could be cut out and you still have people being deceived, but at least there isn't violence done to peaceful people. Unless, of course, they're deceived into thinking it's not violence. And, you know, the system that we have of government it does all those things. They have in every single layer psychologically manipulated us into twisting reality. Is what they do, and then they do that with movements, and so they can create psyops and all this stuff. I'm aware of it. A lot of people are aware of it. The problem is we don't see things about ourselves often because it's a shadow, it's an unconscious, and we don't see where we place ourselves, even though we are the ones in it, because the outsiders are not in it, so they're more likely to see it. So that means people are much more misguided, not just by themselves, but also others, than they are being psyops. There's actually a much more likelihood of that than anything else. I mean, all the time, it's easy to get distracted or it's easy to fall toward the different expectations or it's easy to think, well, this is what I should do because this is what's garnering the most attention, not necessarily that it is what should be done. I mean, there's clearly a concern I have for people who care about freedom and truth in this world that um, we can totally change the world overnight if we wanted to. We have all the people and the resources to do it. I know it. I mean, you look at independent media and some of these big shots, and they have hundreds of millions of subscribers. And even if it's not hundreds of millions, it's still millions. <laughs> and even if they're deplatformed, they still have millions, which means there's even more than them out there. And just comprehend how many people that is. And comprehend what Henry David Thoreau said when he said, if everybody just stops paying taxes, there will be a peaceful revolution and no arms need to be taken to the state. No, no, nothing has to happen. Because, I mean, that's really the only way you can have a revolution. Leo Tolstoy said the same thing. But when do I ever hear that being said by the so-called freedom movement? This is a criticism. And I've had many criticisms like this. Like, why don't we start a movement and become very unified on our message instead of having a billion different messages and, you know, talk about politics and voting and laws. This all will just keep us in the mess. I mean, there's plenty of things I can criticize. They're playing a left versus right game. They're selling more supplements. They're not really telling their, you know, audience to do anything, but I can complain all day. Why well, does it help? I mention it, but like, I'm not going to make every video about it. <laughs> I'm going to make the majority of my content based on providing the solution, based on doing as I see as not being done. And that's the key. <laughs> see, the truth is, it is what it is. You're not going to like what people do, and people are not going to like what you do, no matter what you do, no matter what they do. It's because haters are going to hate. It's because people are going to be people, and that's just the way it is, and that's the way it will always be, no matter under any circumstance, and you have to be able to live with that, and that's why you should just be authentic yourself, and don't pick fights, because it's really not worth your energy, unless that's what you want your image to be, is picking fights, and you can see people like Keemstar on the internet, and a bunch of people constantly talking about others, but then watch them get into an internet controversy and drama controversy one or two years later, because it's inevitable. They're constantly pointing fingers, so people are going to be constantly looking at them, and trying to find every little thing to be at fault with them, and besides, their whole fan base is a bunch of people who like to look at drama in, in between other people, so they'll easily sucker into the idea that that content creator is also picked up in a drama of their own. That's why I don't really worry so much about making trendy content and content that's going to make me famous. I've made videos before talk about how I don't want to be famous because if I did, I wouldn't be myself and also it would prevent me from being myself. 
And seeing this dynamic between the medium and the reality is everything to do with my philosophy, naturosophy. We're talking about humans falling into an illusion and not knowing what is reality because they trap themselves in the illusion, which is the medium. The medium is the technology. The medium is the philosophy. The medium is the book. And all these things we say are helpful, but to attain something more beyond that. And therefore, when we're stuck in the book or the philosophy or the herb or whatever it is, it can be a drug, it can be a miracle cure, it can be a med bed, and a lot of people are talking about, it could be frequencies and vibrations, it can be a food force, it can be natural law. If you stay stuck on that solution, you say it's objective morality, it says it's to be defined a certain way, your medium is now limiting life and life can't be limited. And so when you're stuck there, you create illusion, even though you proclaim to not be for illusion. So next time you want to criticize someone else, realize you probably are at fault for some sort of illusion within your life. And nobody is perfect by any degree of any metric. In fact, that's what makes life beautiful when you're able to accept it. When you're able to accept the fact people have faults or they're not perfect, or even if they are, sigh up, look at their actions and look at what they're doing. And then if you're looking at what their actions or what they're doing, then you're not looking at the person. You can't make any tax on the person. You have to make a tax on what they're doing. So if you're making attacks on what the person is, on, on the who the person is, on the who, the image, the celebrity, you're really not looking at what you need to be looking at. It's again like that common phrase where it's like, <laughs> um, what's more important, the event, right? The person or the idea. And the idea is what really matters. It's funny, I almost put out the, the middle finger. But the idea is what really matters. And so when I had the idea of, oh, I need to do this book or new philosophy, a new way of looking at the world, oh, uh, a, a new way of, you know, engaging in events, a new, um, you know, type of persona, you know, and these are ideas. The problem is where that persona becomes you or where the event becomes you. You, you trap yourself in the box of what you created. You become the tools of your tools. And that's the primary danger with AI. It's anything that proclaims to be social media is antisocial. Anything that proclaims to help your life be more convenient is actually making it less convenient. And nobody sees it because they're simply trapped in the illusion one way or another to see beyond it nature that's why naturosophy exists to help you see past the mediums the first chapter on sapientia naturae my philosophy talks about mediums now is there a better way to portray the information yes speaking about it in interviews about it i've had rather difficulty and i admit i'm not perfect with it but when you understand what I mean by the, the practice of mediums and the practice of opposites and, and um, also compensation, meaning let's say you are taking a drug or you're doing something unnatural, uh, you need to be able to compensate that with something natural or the thing that's doing or the, the thing that is unnatural needs to be producing a natural effect. But then the question is, why do you have that unnatural thing? It's because it's replacing something that was once natural. So that dynamic, I don't expect people to understand the dynamic between voluntarism and statism much easier to understand. The reason why is because humanity is on a continual evolution in their thinking. And I, th and I expect humankind to more liken to understand statism and voluntarism much sooner than technology and its role as what I call the second government and technological slavery or technocracy. I expect that one to come a little bit later in time. And so I'm kind of prophesizing and I expect my words to come back in the future. The whole reason why I say nature is the answer. I don't just expect it. I, I mean, I pretty much know it for a fact it will come back. Even if you get rid of the systems of government and do these other things I talk about, like even growing food forest and permaculture and having that nature connection, that's great. But is that going to prevent us in our minds and our perceptions? in our morality, which is really just neutrality, us seeing the fake versus the real, not necessarily. Now, if you're interacting with nature on the daily and you really get to see that natural parts of humanity, such as a social life between people face to face, then you're going to see that fakery, illusory, 
um, type of social life, which is that between the computer, between, you know, um, a smartphone. And again, just because somebody's misguided and they think, oh, well, this form of AI or this form of illusion is better than that one, does not mean they're a psyop. It just means that they haven't had a full understanding and could you blame them in a world that's full of confusion or full of illusions? The best you can do is, is show by example, and I mean that. So hopefully I made that point quite clear. I see drama here and there appearing on different places, and it's funny to me that people still use Facebook because, of course, that's where the majority of it happens, and most of the content creators incite it, not going to lie. They deserve blame for that because they can totally just ignore it, but instead they actually feed it by giving it attention. Uh, so, uh, yeah, sorry, Mark Passo or Larkin Rose, when you constantly are like, well, this person said this about me. It's like, oh, here we go. Now you're starting a whole thing. But you know what? It probably is going to get your page more attention. So uh, I guess it has some benefits to it. But, you know, nonetheless, I really don't want to cave into that. You know, there's people who hate it on me for sure. There's people who don't like my views on veganism. I hear that all the time. Um, but... You know, I don't really care. I live my life. I do my thing. It's not really affecting anybody. Um, and I think they know that. <laughs> so, like, they do what they do. They promote what they promote. I promote what I promote. And there we go. And, uh, you know, I engage in a little bit of discussion as long as it's polite, as long as it's, you know, inquisitive. And um, you just see where things lead. But we know that if we, if I believe this thing and this person believes that thing, there's not really going to be any convincing on either end. Um, so it's just how most conversations go. And that's the beauty in voluntarism. That's the beauty in not having a government because people can disagree and people can live with that disagreement. So they're not willing to like go to war with one another and stink in go across the world and, and do all this crazy stuff, which governments do all the time. So that's that. Hopefully this clarifies on the nature of drama more than I've talked about on this channel several times here and there, usually in the defense of somebody, um, like a popular content creator or somebody I feel like who's not getting defense, but there's no one really to defend here. It's more so just a general statement about the nature of these things. So thank you very much for watching. This is Corey Angelot. Nature is the answer.